Hey, and good afternoon. This is Angela from Ask a House Cleaner, and I'm super excited that you guys have joined me today. Today, I'm here with Sherry Cedar, and she is brilliant, and I'm super excited to have her back. She runs one of the largest cleaning companies, commercial cleaning companies in the state of Florida that's independently owned and operated, and she runs the business with her husband, and she's just a wealth of information. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is wonderful to be here as Super Treat, and I love your background. I will just continue to say that it's brilliant, colorful and cheery and happy, which is what cleaning should represent. Speaking of assets, I'm curious how you go about getting commercial cleaning jobs. I know lots of house cleaners ask me on a regular basis, like, hey, I want more commercial business. How do you get jobs? Oh, I wish I had like the magic bullet, right? The silver bullet for that. Look, I think customer word of mouth is first and foremost. When a customer is happy, they are very likely to say to their colleagues and friends, we love our company. We love our cleaning company. You could picture people are at happy hour, it drinks, right? Ugh, the cleaning company left the bathroom smelling like urine again. Those urine guards haven't been changed. Oh, I'm so mad. We love our company. You should call AK Building Services. Like that's the best way. And then of course, we are always out there making connections, always letting people know who we are. So when they're ready, they can call us, you know? And of course we have a sales team as well who are out there working very hard because everybody needs cleaning. Everyone on here is in a great industry. Every home needs to be cleaned and every business needs to be cleaned. It is a wonderfully recession-proof business. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because there are a lot of people that don't stop to realize there's a budget for cleaning. At every company, there's a budget for cleaning. Companies have to be clean. Although so, sometimes they want like a Rolls Royce and they're only willing to pay for like, you know, a 1994 Camry. So you have to set people's expectations. That's a big part of bidding carefully. So tell me what happens when somebody has a 94 budget and they're looking for the 2003 Rolls Royce. It's not business I want. You can sort of see those customers right away. You'll give them what you really think they need, what you recommend. And say, well, I only have this budget, this amount. And you say, okay, if we go to that budget, maybe your floors will be vacuumed once a week and not every day. Are you okay with that? You know, you really have to paint the picture of what this budget amount is going to afford them. Mm -hmm. And they'll have to make a decision whether that they can live with that or not. You put it in the scope of work. So there's full transparency. It's like an upfront contract. You set expectations. And if they are just like, well, could you squeeze it in for me? Then we might just say, you know what? There are people who could do it for less and we wish you the best. I'll never want to put myself in that situation because it's really the cleaners who end up suffering because then they come back to the cleaners. Oh, could you do a little more, a little more? And then the cleaners are going over budget. And you say, why are you going over budget? I'm not making any money on this building. Wait, wait a second. Why am I losing money on this customer? And it doesn't make sense for anybody. I want to stop for just a second on what you just said, because this is really important and I don't want it to slip by. The person that's bidding the job is holding everyone else on the team accountable. And what I'm hearing Sherry say is that they're setting expectations that are reasonable and realistic so that when the cleaner comes in, the cleaner can follow and deliver what was promised. And if, if, if somebody somewhere along the way breaks that chain of command and they start adding things on, the company takes a hit because the company has made special promises and they've bid a price that is fair for what has been agreed on. And there's a contract in place. Mm -hmm. And when the cleaner comes in and does extras, while that might be lovely and don't we wish we all could do that, that's not what's being served up on the menu. That's not what they paid for. And so if you're doing extra things or you're fitting in extra requests that are not part of the job, those need to go back through the company. You got to get on the phone and you got to call your supervisor and say, hey, wait a second, I have some special requests here. Is this allowed? And if it's not allowed, you'll be given an instruction that, no, that's not allowed. Or they'll get on the phone with the person and they'll resolve it without you, okay? You just go about and do the business you were hired to do. Because otherwise, it costs a whole lot of money and it's not scalable. And if nobody, check this out, if nobody's making money on the work that you do, even if it's fantastic, you're going to lose your job. 
Yeah. And there's a few points to add on to that. We pride ourselves on going above and beyond. We often do that. And that's great. When you hire a larger, more established company, you have some flexibility to do these things. However, when it comes to every day and the norm, that's a different story. So you have to use your judgment. You know what? This is a great customer. We're grateful for their business. Yes, we could do a little more. And because that's what you do, right? You always give a little more. But dishes are not in the scope of work in a kitchen for commercial. They're just not. Otherwise, you have a professional dishwasher. Sometimes the cleaners will go in and they'll do it once in a while. But then people start thinking the cleaners are going to do it. Now the dishes are stacked up. Then you say, why am I over budget? What's going on? Why do you need two extra hours? They say, well, we do the dishes. You say, no, no more. Then the customer come back and says, well, they stopped doing dishes because they expected the dishes to be done. And now everyone's upset. I like to look at it like going to a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, they give you a menu and you say, I would like to have the entree. They don't bring you out appetizers just because they want to give you a little something extra. They don't. If you didn't pay for them, you don't get them. And so what would you like to drink? You say, I'll have water. Okay, great. They're going to bring you water and your entree. They're not going to give you free dessert just because, well, you're a good customer, so here's a free dessert. Maybe they do every once in a while, but that's not the norm. And they don't do it for all the customers, right? It's on the menu, but that's not what you purchased at any point. You can always purchase an appetizer or drinks or dessert or whatever. It's available to you. But if that's not on the menu, what we're serving is exactly what the customer paid for. And we're going to make it the best version of whatever they paid for every single time. And that's the reason we go back, and I bet you guys do this too. You go to a restaurant and you order the same thing over and over and over and over again, right? Every time you go, I know I do. Why? Because I can count on that one dish being spectacular. They deliver it the best way every single time. I know that I can order extra things, and so do our customers. And we need to be crystal clear about the extras that we do. It's going to be a little garnish here and a little garnish there. It's not going to be a whole free appetizer or dessert or whatever, okay? It's not scalable, and you don't make money giving stuff away. So I love what Sherry said, and I love the way she said it. It's quality control, okay? We're going to deliver the best we can And it's going to be exactly what we promised by setting expectations in advance. And it's also okay to say, I think you could use a deep clean right now. It's been a while. Would you like me to do a special job for you? And then you could come do the deep clean, the closets, whatever it is you're going to do, or the floor work, because that's understood. There's maintenance and then there's special projects. And that's very important to distinguish the two different products that you offer. We have service providers that come and some of the service providers that always get my business. And I love this. It's a great approach. They say, hey, you're due for a deep cleaning or you're due for this or whatever. (laughs) It's that time again on the calendar for this particular service. When would you like us to schedule it? And just the way they say it, it's just so matter of fact, like, you know, it's time again. Here we go. Okay, let's schedule that. But it goes on the schedule and there's an extra fee for that, right? It's not free. It's not a freebie. Yeah. And I don't think people should be shy about that or feel bad about it. It is what it is. And just be matter of fact about it. Well, I have learned so much from you. And if you have one piece of advice that you want to leave residential cleaners who are thinking about the commercial business, what piece of advice would you give them? Think carefully because it is a very different business. While the core tenet of cleaning is the same, the methodology, the insurance, all of the sort of business surrounding the business are different and the pay scales are different. So just think carefully and wisely before you take that plunge. Great advice, as always. Oh, I love this. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me here today. Thank you, Sherry. This has been enlightening and informational and entertaining. So thank you. I appreciate you guys dropping in today to visit with us and to share this information. So until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Yes, shine brighter.